bloody freezing. Oh. You're on candid camera today. We're back, and as you can tell, the winter weather has finally caught up with me in the lower South Island. In fairness, it is now the depths of midwinter, so it had to come at some time. But it also means that carving is just around the corner. As you've heard me say time and time again during my year here, New Zealand farming is very seasonal. They are trying to match the nutritional needs of the livestock with the growth cycle of the grass. And to that end, most dairy cows carve in August or the equivalent of February in the Northern Hemisphere. So by the time they hit peak milk production, the spring grass should hopefully be romping away. Although admittedly, mother nature doesn't always play ball. Like many other events, a successful carving doesn't happen on the day, however hard these farmers might work. It's a year round process and today I'm here to check the trace element status, more on that in a second, of the cows and the heifers in this herd on the cusp of carving. If we find that they are short of some vital element, we still have time to correct the balance. I need to collect both blood and liver samples today and often I do that with the cows bunched up tight in a race, but the facilities here are a bit different so I'm doing it on the rotary milking platform. The mature cows, they know the drill, they've done this a hundred times before, but the heifers are only going on for the second or perhaps even the first time, so they're a little more nervous and you can probably tell. One of these must have last night because I had a calf out there with <laughs> Hmm. So we've just got the heifers to get in. Uh, yeah, you can see they're, they're a wee, wee bit smaller. We get more reluctant to get on the platform because it may even be their first time. There's a little bit of persuasion has to go on. The idea is we'll get these girls on, we'll send them right on the rotary, I'll get some blood from them, and then we'll get some livers as well. So it's just like that pre-dry off um, trace element check you saw me do in a previous video. In fact, not that long ago, except this is a pre-carving one. We tend, 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 we tend to check the levels. Pre-carving, pre-mating, and then pre-dry off. So three points during the annual cycle, if you like. So yeah, we'll be checking today for really the same three things we did before. We're going to look for selenium, magnesium, and copper. And it's the livers we need for the copper. Because blood copper isn't actually a fantastic way of measuring it generally. Um, it's better than nothing, but liver samples give you a far more accurate uh, representation of where the copper is in those girls. And importantly, we're going to do cows and heifers. So heifers, will, you know, this is their first calving. This will be their first milking season. And the reason is the demands are probably a bit different on the heifers versus the cows. And also they haven't had the same supplementation that the cows have either. So it's important to try and get an idea of A, the overall status, but also B, if there's a difference between the status of the cows and the heifers, because we can treat them differently if so. Now you've seen me do this before, I'm not going to show you the, all the gory detail of the um, liver biopsies. If you want to see that, go back and check that other video. I'll link to it here or maybe in the video description. Um, it's actually a remarkably straightforward procedure. It's just not something we do a lot of in the UK. And copper is one of those minerals, it's very much like a Goldilocks mineral. It can very easily be too low, in which case we get issues with things like immunity and fertility. But it can also very easily get too high if we give too much copper supplementation or we're feeding them with a food stuff that's rich in copper like uh, palm kernel extract, for example. Um, so it's important we keep a lid on it, really. We've got one last stubborn heifer. I don't blame them. It's all a bit new, it's all a bit noisy. It's probably a bit off-putting for them, but they all get used to it. Come on, darling. Come on, darling. Come on, sweetie. 
Now they're all on, it's time for the world's slowest merry-go-round. These rotary sheds are pretty handy for collecting blood samples when you have an elevated platform like this vet stand. Just in case you haven't seen it before, blood is typically collected from the tail vein in adult cattle because A, it's a reasonably big juicy vein and B, it is easily accessible. You just have to slip the needle between the vertebrae of the tail and the pressure is usually enough to fill the blood tube within a few seconds. No tourniquet needed and cows are tough. There's no chance of my patients fainting. We only need eight samples today split evenly along the cows and the heifers so it takes no time at all. On to the livers next, but just before we do, I've got the farmer here, Jeremy, to talk about something a little different for a few minutes. New Zealand's dairy industry is very innovative, not just how they manage cows, but also in how farming businesses are set up. You could argue they are a lot more diverse and generally more collaborative than the traditional storybook model of farmer owns a farm, farmer owns some cows, farmer milks the cows and collects the money. For example, Jeremy is new to the farm this season. He is what's called a contract milker. We've talked before about that particularly Kiwi phenomenon, share milking. Contract milking is sort of same but different. I'll let Jeremy explain. Right, Jeremy, you've very kindly taken five minutes um, after we've done those uh, samples. Contract milking, what is it? Uh, it's running a farm, get paid a percentage or a set amount, I suppose. So Willie, who's hiding behind the camera here, is he's a farm yeah. owner and he owns the cows um, yep. and, you know, all this. How would it be different if he was hiring you as a manager? Um, well, he'd supply staff, bikes, yeah. you know, all machinery. Um, you just turn up on a day, clock in, do your job. Clock out. Home, yeah. And the difference between that and a contract milker? Uh, well, we run our own business. We, we guess a small business. Yeah, we run our bikes. We get our own staff. So you're responsible for the machinery, the labour, and we'll all contract out the milking of these cows to you. And, and you much, don't get yeah. paid. As you and your your partner Ruth, is that right? Bridget. Bridget. Yep. Bridget. Sorry, Bridget. <laughs> Sorry, Bridget. Um, you and your partner Bridget, and and you. They like say it's your own company, so you're not getting paid a salary from Willie, are you? No, you're paying no, yourself we're a salary. On, based on production. And you'll get you'll get a percentage of and it, I suppose it varies yeah. between contracts, right? But there's all sorts. A percentage of the milk check. Yep. Yeah. And, and have you always done that or because uh, obviously it's sort of a middle ground between being a manager like a member of staff or, and share milking, isn't it? Some, yeah, yeah. Somewhere in between. Yeah, in between. Whereas share milking would be very similar except you would own a percentage of the cows, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Pretty much same, this different scale, and there's all sorts of scales. Every farm can be tailor made to yeah. suit. So uh, I suppose there's pros and cons to all those systems. You know, share milking, contract milking, um, being a, just a, a paid member of staff. Yeah, yeah. What's the benefits of being a contract milker? Do you find? Uh, well, you're self-employed. Yeah. Um, it does give you flexibility, but at the same time, I guess it gives you more responsibility. Same flexibility <laughs> to work harder. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but I suppose um, you're working for yourself, aren't you? Yeah, and the, you know, the better you do, the more you theory is, the more you yeah. work. Yeah, you, know, you just have a bit more control over what goes on. So we don't have too many little sort of setups like that in the UK. There will be some, but I wonder if there's a bit more room for it. There's certainly more contract uh, arable work, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Sort of cereals and stuff. But oh no, there you go. Thanks, Jeremy. I won't hold you up any longer. You've been <laughs> very good sport putting yeah. out with me today. Right, that's contract milking. What do you reckon? Is there more room for contract farming models in the UK? Anyhow, we're straight back into the liver biopsies. Like I said, you've seen me do this before where I describe the process in more detail, but the very quick outline of the procedure is clip, clean, local anaesthetic, clean again, make a small stab incision with a scalpel blade, pass a liver biopsy needle between the ribs, use a syringe to provide a bit of negative pressure, make a couple of passes into the liver tissue, and hey presto, you have a small cylindrical liver biopsy. The wound just gets a small amount of topical antibiotics and she is good to go. Thankfully, the liver is both large and resilient. Think about the beating some of us give ours. So taking this sample doesn't do it any harm. Anyway, that's the process. I just need to rinse and repeat for a total of eight animals. Go through the underpass. It's a bit like the underground in there. Like the tube network in London. Hope that was a good one for you. It should be, again, a shorter, snappier one. Um, we'll have some more on farm stuff coming soon. If you don't want to miss those videos, click subscribe, ring the little bell. It really helps the channel grow. Otherwise, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave me a comment. See you for the next one.